Welcome to Tough Talk. I'm your host, Paul Terrace, and today my guest is Brad Host. Brad has been a resident of Birmingham and active in community, community affairs for over 40 years. He has served two terms on the Birmingham School Board and has been involved in two neighborhood associations. Over the last 15 years, he has been active in rezoning issues and fought the library bond proposal in 2015. He is currently fighting the $57.4 million bond issue for a new parking garage that will take place this August 6th. Brad is also running for Birmingham City Commission this November 5th. Welcome, Brad. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. So, what is this $57 million bond issue for a parking garage all about? Well, um, the city would say that uh, they need to move the structure and then, you know, of course, demo it first and then move it 71 feet, put three additional floors underground and one on uh, above the five stories that we know as the now structure. Uh, and then, of course, they want to build uh, the RH uh, uh, the developers want to build RH on that 71 feet, and then uh, the second phase is 135,000 square feet commercial retail development, all of which is on public land that would be leased to the developer. Wait, that's wait. their version. Okay. When you say RH, that's... Uh, Restoration what? Hardware. Okay. I think they just changed their name, you know, oh. to RH. Oh, okay. And they're currently in Somerset? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why do the residents have to vote on this uh, proposal? Well, first off, uh, it's a special election uh, to vote on it because the city has said uh, that the structure is uh, unsafe. They, they've changed that tune, by the way, as well as they keep changing, uh, you know, what, what they uh, are going to develop. Uh, but we try to keep on top of the numbers and uh, what the city uh, is giving us so that we can react to it with uh, facts. Okay. One of the biggest problems, Paul, is that uh, we have a 275 parking spot deficit in that structure right now. And uh, uh, this uh, new, new and improved structure, which, by the way, to take the three floors down into the ground and add one on top, doubles the price of uh, the structure compared to other ones in our area. Um, but uh, the addition of 414 spots, that's what they're adding. The, the real rube is that the RFP, which was for the entire development, which we'll call 133 million, um, used uh, 564 square feet per parking spot uh, in the RFP. And when they ratcheted it back down to the parking structure uh, and, and the RH center, they uh, stayed with that 564 square feet, whereas if you use 300, which is the norm in Birmingham for uh, uh, commercial space, there's four floors at 300 square feet per, per spot. And then the rooftop, which is going to be a restaurant, would be 100 square feet per car which more or less adds up to about 300 of the 400 spots they're talking about. Whereas the city is stuck with their 564 square feet on the RH building, which uh, is unfortunate. Okay. So I think what you're saying is we're not gaining that many parking spaces. Well, I'm trying to show you holes in their argument for uh, trying to get us out of this deficit condition. And of course, they have changed their tune on uh, the uh, 
unsafe nature of the existing structure because they finally released July 5th, the engineering study on the structure, which says that the structure is sound. All it needs is a couple million in fascia and maybe four million interior, and that structure can go on for decades. So six or seven million, and the structure will look good and function properly. Yes, sir, as well as go on for decades. Uh, you know, the notion is a lot of us in Birmingham live in very old homes, and uh, if we maintain them, they'll go on for another hundred years. You know, I, uh, you're talking to me in a hundred-year-old house as it is, but it's built like the rocket Gibraltar, and that's more or less how I would view uh, the now structure that we're talking about. I mean, it's it's in place concrete that uh, should last. Look at the Roman Colosseum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm right there with you. My house is 90 years old, so and it's sound. So um, structure is well built. Will will uh, continue for many years. So they say parking fees will pay to cover the the debt. What happens if the fees don't cover the debt payments? Well, uh, you bring up a very basic point, and that is, uh, if you look at the uh, language on the special election, uh, it's a general obligation bond, which by definition, Paul, means you and I and everybody else in Birmingham is obligated for it. Uh, and. Uh, um, Um, I've lost my train of thought on that. Uh, it, it says uh, is uh, in, in part, part the part for the parking structure. The words in part of are very worrisome. And then the money that you were mentioning uh, toward the end of the uh, sent, uh, paragraph, it says uh, the revenues from the parking structure are intended to pay for it. The notion is we've had people work on the numbers that the city has given us and uh, unless they dramatically raise parking rates there's no way uh, the structure can be self-sustaining on uh, you know on, on the payment. But again I come back to the fact that the whole thing the taxpayers of Birmingham are responsible for uh, whenever they tell you something's free I like to think most of us are mature enough to step back and say, no, I don't think so. <laughs> There's nothing that's free. You're, you're right there. So um, you talked earlier about the RFP. How, how, how did the contract get awarded to the current developer? Well, my version would be different than the city's. and. Uh, the fact is the RFP was so gigantic and the city even says it was so gigantic that there were very few qualified bidders to begin with and I assume they mean in the Midwest. They only had uh, four bidders and two dropped out right away and you, you're probably aware the second one is suing the city in federal court. You know they gave it to the remaining bidder and they've divided this up into three components. One component is the city, and Paul, that would be you and I. Another component is the developers, and they are, uh, you know, well known. And the third component is the design build team, and they they show this uh, right up to the minute. Now, what's weird about this relationship is that two of the developers are the design build team so the two different groups are more or less one in the same and the developers are getting a uh, fee to supervise the design build which uh, happens to be themselves and according to the city uh, that's not uncommon that uh, developers will choose their own companies to work with what I personally feel is out of whack is that they get a million seven to supervise themselves. 
I think that the, even though it's not against the law, I think it uh, uh, there should be more arm's length agreement that we're uh, signing. I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, you would think they're thinking they're doing it properly, and there should be somebody independent just looking over their shoulder. Right. In this case, I don't know how they can look over their own shoulder, but they're sure going to get a lot of money to try. Right. <laughs> so, like you, I live in Birmingham, and I get mailers almost every other day saying to vote yes. This is just a few of the mailers I've received. And every time I uh, log on to Facebook, and I'm not exaggerating, I see an ad telling me to vote yes for this proposal. Do you have any idea how much the developer has spent trying to sell this deal to the taxpayers of Birmingham? Well, we, uh, we have talked to a few uh, people that supposedly know what things cost. And uh, the bill that we're up against is a minimum of $200,000, namely out of Okemos and all the uh, political operatives are having, uh, uh, we're up against some very serious money. Whereas for my pack and the people that uh, are trying to fight this, we're getting $25 to $100 donations from our neighbors. You know, the political operatives tend to not be Birmingham residents. Uh, you know, you may not know this, but they have hired people to go door to door, and I would say uh, they are not from Birmingham, but they're being paid to uh, tap on doors and get the, the yes vote out. Okay. Whereas our group are all just Birmingham citizens who uh, love this town. Uh, and uh, don't want us to get in this uh, situation where we have the biggest mortgage in the history of our city uh, without any kind of guarantees. Okay. Um, all, also, I received, and I'm sure you did, this nice uh, piece of information from the city of Birmingham. Six pages. Nice. And, and it seems right. like everything you're saying, you know, your group is saying is labeled a myth. And then they supposedly say this is the actual fact. Um, how, how would you respond to this? Well, uh, I guess we should be delighted that they took our uh, materials seriously. But uh, we don't feel they're myths at all. In fact, uh, the main myth uh, that, that really is bothersome to me is the fact that they came out with the engineering study July 5th, which says the structure is sound. And whereas before that, they were saying that it was unsafe. Um, you know, the notion is we're only trying to deal in facts and to call citizens who are concerned and involved and in watching all this uh, myth makers no we're playing off of their facts uh, and, and and I assume you know we filed a, a grievance with uh, Jocelyn Benson as Secretary of State uh, for a campaign finance violation because it, it you know the thing all all but says yes you got to vote for it uh, and, and sadly, it was knocked down, but we that was probably the point we realized that it was hardball. Uh, another problem is uh, there's a lot of those thing, uh, six-pagers floating around, and they're in the hands of the uh, hired yes people, and I wonder how they got there. That's you know, a good question. It is a good question. Yeah, yeah. And, and I can't believe that, you know, everything, they, they have it, you know, targeted towards your group, that everything you guys are saying is a myth and nothing the developers are saying is, is a myth. And that just seems impossible. I, I would agree with you, Paul. 
Uh, I mean, we are we are committed to uh, the betterment of our city, and maybe uh, part of this proposal is uh, excellent, uh, but overall it is uh, dysfunctional and putting uh, the taxpayers on the hook for something that is basically a promise, and uh, you don't you don't risk uh, all your marbles on a promise. Okay. And, and so if, by chance, this bond proposal passes, will voters have any say about the other development that will take place? Um, they have already said no. You know, the point being, if we pass this, uh, phase two will be an automatic. And we haven't even really broached uh, one of the main bones of contention, which is, this is the most prime land that you and I own that has not been developed. And to do an end run around the voters on the biggest undeveloped piece of land in our uh, uh, repertoire, uh, you know, the way they do it is with a 99-year lease, because if it were 100 years, it's the same as the sale, and by law, if it's a sale, they have to ask the voters of Birmingham to uh, to approve it, and they don't want to do that. That's why there's a special election. <laughs> well, and it clearly seems to be an end round end run around the voters with a 99 year lease. Yes, sir. And uh, and I, I well, first off, the developers are paying for the lease. I mean, for for the uh, special election. And our uh, city attorney uh, says uh, that that's okay. It's like giving a park bench to one of our parks. Only in this case, it happens to be a twenty thousand dollar donation to cover this. Repeat that. We uh, lost you there. Um, okay. The uh, special election uh, is being backed by the developers and paid for, and it's considered a donation to the city of Birmingham. Our attorney, Tim Curry, or the city attorney, has uh, said that uh, that is legal because it's like a, just a donation to help us with the uh, art in the park or uh, a bench uh, by a lake. Uh, it, it's a donation to the city. The fact that it happens to be about the same amount as the special election is probably just a coincidence. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was just a coincidence. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I find it kind of uh, suspicious when they schedule these large uh, bond issues not in November, but rather in August when voter turnout is usually lighter. Yes, and, and I would say that would be the first suspicious thing about this. You know, wow. It really isn't fair to the voters. It, it, in a very real sense, it's reminiscent of our library bond in uh, 2015. There was no reason to have a special election. You know, the library wasn't going to fall down. Uh, this parking structure is not going to fall down. It's in, in pretty good shape, though it's been neglected, and and that should be part of uh, our uh, city's obligation to upkeep our assets. They've neglected it here in the last 10 years, and uh, as such, uh, maybe they were preparing for the demolition as of August 6th, you know, the election. Okay. Maybe that's their excuse. But, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> okay. Now, to me, one of the really suspicious things that, or troublesome things, maybe I should say, is one of the individuals involved in the development group is Ron Boji, who um, a few years back sold the first seven floors of the Capitol View building to the state of Michigan for about $41 million. The assessor valued that deal at maybe $12 million, said you could build that structure new for $22 million. So any way you slice it, he made out pretty well in that deal. Well, and, 
And to enter into a deal with somebody who does deals like that, I think Birmingham residents should be concerned. Paul, uh, we've, without getting into personalities, we uh, totally agree with you. Uh, we suggest uh, people look up Mr. Boji and the various stories uh, that journalists, real journalists, have done in depth on uh, the many private public partnerships he has facilitated. Uh, it, it's very worrisome. Okay. Um, and are there any other uh, things that are troubling to you regarding this deal? Um, well, the fact that, uh, you know, this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but the fact that uh, all the information disseminated by the city as well as by the developers uh, attempts to discredit what, what our side would say are truly the facts. They're not myths. Uh, that's unsettling, but I had uh, a very smart person tell me this morning, Brad, this is a political campaign. Don't take anything personally, which is my lead into what happened two weeks ago uh, uh, this past Monday night when uh, two of my cohorts, uh, David Bloom and Clinton Baller were not allowed to speak in the open session at the end of the uh, city commission meeting. Uh, they, you know, literally there were five or six of us there to speak about this parking structure as well as the bond issue. And uh, they shut us down with a very flimsy uh, excuse that the, the cable agreement with uh, the cable authority didn't allow political speech. Uh, and, and maybe you know that the, there's a, a lawsuit uh, about the First Amendment against the city, and which they doubled down on two nights ago by uh, saying that uh, they can stop the TV cameras and the mics anytime they want. Uh, they never articulated why or when they would do that, and they left the mics on all night. But the fact that they can turn them off and, and not have to listen to citizens talking to them about serious local issues, uh, and, and they can do it arbitrarily, uh, is uh, another form of censorship. So the uh, suit with the First and the Fourteenth Amendment may be expanded uh, thanks to their actions Monday evening with us. They don't like us, Paul. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, they, they don't like me either. That's why I was kicked off of their uh, the Bloomfield Township Television uh, Network after doing this, my show for two years. So you're not alone there, Brad. Okay. Well, uh, there's a joy in being an outsider, I guess. <laughs> so uh, maybe you don't know this. Clinton, Baylor, and I are, are, are running for the commission. Uh, and uh, the point being, we'd like to become part of the solution. You know, personally, uh, I think uh, we can help make uh, Birmingham better, but we have to be more collaborative and include everybody. You know, the city would say, well, we had 40 meetings in the last year and a half on this, and, and uh, very few people uh, said anything. Uh, whereas, uh, if uh, you were a Birmingham resident that didn't know anything about this, uh, I would put it this way. Well, the commission and the administration started talking about the now structure a year and a half ago. They took their discussion instantly to Mars or Pluto or June, Jupiter, and they stayed there for a year and a half. And then, with 20 minutes before the vote, May 6th, the mayor ratcheted it back down to the parking structure. Well, we spent a year and a half uh, almost in a black hole, and it's very hard to believe that that year and a half was uh, not part of the whole scheme. And that would be, you know, the RH building and phase two, adding 130,000 square feet of uh, commercial retail point is, I, uh, the most important thing they have 
should be public trust, and they don't have it with uh, a lot of us. Namely, they they have uh, not shown them to be shown themselves to be trustworthy. Well, I wish you and Clinton much success come November, and uh, I hope uh, your group is uh, successful in defeating this uh, bond proposal. Well, thank you so much, Paul. That's nice to hear. Okay, well, thank you, Brad. My pleasure. Appreciate it.